Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a nice little gummy shader, which you would have seen something similar to in the outros of some of the tutorials if you've been watching for a while. We're going to do it here in Maya with the Render Man. It's pretty easy to set up, so let's get started. You'll see here that I've already got a little light rig and st um, studio set up just with an overhead and a key light, and I've got some geometry that I'm going to apply this to. So the first thing we'll do is we'll assign a shader to it. And we'll call this gummy underscore mat. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And then we'll bring up the hype shader editor. All right, so we've got the shader here, and it will just look like a diffuse shader at the moment. So why don't we bring the render up? Okay, so for reference, that's what it's going to look like there um, to begin with. And the main thing that we want to work on with this is two things. I'm going to add some sugar flakes to it, and then I'm also going to add, uh, make it translucent with a little bit of subsurface scattering. I sort of talked to this about this a little bit in the glass tutorial, which would have just come out yesterday, I believe. Um, so if you haven't watched that, check that out. But um, we'll go into it in a bit more detail here. So to make this translucent and have a little bit of subsurface scattering, we're just going to use the glass lobe, and we'll do so by um, removing the diffuse gain and then we'll increase refraction and the uh, reflection gain and then the refraction color I'm going to make it this aqua green color which I quite like um, and then the roughness I'll keep it 0.1 for the moment so you'll see that we've got um, should be able to see that light through there a little bit nice translucent surface basically kind of looks like jelly at the moment so the next thing that we want to do is add a little bit of subsurface scattering. We're going to do that with the uh, single scatter albedo, which is under the interior lobe, under your glass lobe. Um, so we're just going to increase the single scatter to white, and then we'll just add a little bit of extinction, and we'll see what we get here. So you can see that as we increase the extinction, it increases the density of the interior area of the um, gummy robot. Um, and as you get higher and higher, it's going to become quite dark. And this may be what you're going for. Uh, me personally, I'm going to keep it quite low. I want it to be fairly translucent. Um, and I'm going to change the single scatter albedo to be uh, the same color as our as our refraction color. So we'll get a little bit of multiplying there, which will make it look a little bit closer to a forest green. We can add in some multiple scattering if you want. It will depend on um, sort of whether you can be bothered with the render times. Multiple scattering will increase that quite a bit. But if you are using the extinction quite high, it can be good to be getting uh, to be able to get a little bit more um, brightness into your interiors again. Uh, but because I'm not going to be using multi scattering, I'm going to use a sort of extinction that looks like this somewhere around there which I might change once I change the roughness so for the roughness I'm going to use a Vora noise which is just a noise generator and I'll increase, increase the frequency so you can see it's got a sort of random cloudy look to it and we'll run the result F into the glass roughness so this will just give us a little bit more of a natural specular highlight rather than a really consistent um, specularity and also it will just help a little bit with the way the interior looks because of the way that the light isn't being refracted through the other side of the mesh uh, consistently so we'll just make it look sort of almost a little bit cloudy on the inside even though it's actually a surface material so that's pretty straightforward. If you just want a basic gummy sort of setup, that's not too bad. Uh, but I do want to add some sugar to this. And to do that, I'm going to just go back to our diffuse material for the moment, um, just so we can visualize it a little bit easier. To do this, I'm going to use Pixar Flakes. This is going to be a little bit cartoony, um, but I quite like the way it looks. We're going to use the alpha from the Pixar Flakes and plug it into the diffuse gain. And then we can change our color to white and so the flakes are going to be our sugar so I want the sugar to look white if we run the IPR we'll start to see it happening and we're going to need to reduce the flake frequency so you can see that adjusting the flake frequency will actually increase the size of them and um, you could also do it further with the flake size so you need to balance the two to get a result that you want so if you want a little sparse amount of flakes you could do something like that um, what I'm going to do actually is create some a little bit more frequency I'll kind of randomize them a bit as well increase the jitter because they're just looking a little bit square um, in their distribution 
Okay, so we're getting a little bit of different sizes there, but I want a little bit more contrast and I want to have a lot of little ones uh, to combine with this. So what we can do is create another PXR flake and run this alpha into the diffuse and then we will reduce the flake frequency to 10. Let's run that IPR again. Okay, so we've got lots of flakes. I'm just going to increase that until I find an amount that I like, probably 30, and then we'll just uh, reduce the density and I'm going to lower the randomness so they're a little bit more consistent and being small. Sometimes the renderer will um, hang up a little bit and you might need to just quickly re-render if it's not updating and that's that's fine it will happen sometimes. Okay so that looks pretty much like how I want it to. So what we'll do now is we'll combine these two with a blend, a PXR blend and we're just going to use the alpha from each output into the blend and then run the alpha into the diffuse again and just so all the flakes aren't the exact same color we'll use a Voronoise again run the RGB into the diffuse color and I'm going to increase the frequency to be quite high so we get a quick variety of um, colors so now when we render that you'll see we get some big ones we get some small ones and you can still go back and make adjustments to your sizes and things. Okay, so that's sort of where I landed with the larger ones and that's where I landed with the smaller ones. If you want to do something similar, um, your mesh size will also uh, have an impact on the, uh, on the values that you go for here. But um, this is fairly dense and worth noting is if you're using denoising, which I've already got enabled here, um, you might find that it's not able to pass the denoising very easily at low sample rates just because lots of little dots does tend to look like noise to the denoiser. Um, so bear that in mind if you're going to be doing um, animations and things like that. So let's turn our refraction and our reflection back on, run the IPR again. Alright and um, that is sort of where it's looking at the moment and we'll turn around and have a look at the backside as well where we should be able to see the light being uh, refracted through. Okay, so I've rendered it up a little bit from the rear and it doesn't look bad, though one thing I've noticed is that we don't get any change to our silhouette. So we could actually add a little bit of either bump or displacement. I'm just going to use a um, scalar displacement here, which will increase the render time a little bit, but since this is the only thing that I'm rendering, it doesn't really matter and it's close up, so I kind of want to make it look a little bit better. So we're just going to hit tab and type in displace, always spell incorrectly for some reason and then we're going to delete that um, shading group and connect our displacement shader to the out color of our displace node and then we want to use the blend from these two here as our displacement so we can run the um, alpha into the displacement scalar and then if we render it'll probably be crazy yep so we get a really spiky um, sort of thing happening. So we're going to need to decrease that to probably 0.1, maybe a little bit less even. Let's zoom in and have a look. Bit less. All right, so now we're starting to get a better silhouette. Um, we could randomize that a bit more though if we just use the RGB color from our blend rather than our um, alpha. So what we'll do is we'll create another Vora noise and we'll run that result RGB into the bottom color and we'll just use the same one on both um, and we'll randomize the frequency um, but that amount should be okay and then we'll create a two float and that will just allow us to run this RGB input or output from the blend to a float that we can plug into our scalar so we may be able to see a little bit more variation in the height of all those little pieces of sugar now yeah I mean you can see the difference it does also back it off quite a bit so you need to make a decision as to whether you want to do that I think I kind of prefer it the other way so I'm just going to pop it back to that but that is an option if you just want to uh, vary your surface okay so that is pretty much finished rendering this is the de uh, un denoised version and this is the denoised version which gets quite a bit blurry um, this is obviously not what the final denoise would look like as it's not using the denoiser that renderman actually uses when you batch render so you may want to do a batch render to see the differences there however because it kind of is a noisy surface anyway you might find that you're just better off 
um, rendering out this as a separate render layer and denoising everything else um, or just creating a cryptomat and masking this out as from your non-variance ver uh, from your variance version rather than your pro uh, denoised version um, and add them together in in post so you get a little bit more um, an interesting slightly more interesting look to your gummy robot if you're me <laughs> that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below